everyone guys welcome to this mini youtube series we're going to start off this is mr pugley the v8 defender during the next few weeks we're going to build up mr pugley to a more capable off-road vehicle also camping wise we're getting some sponsors involved in this whole project really awesome guys i'll reveal them later on as we go with the videos on and then the stuff that i can do myself the diy kind of stuff that we're going to do in my garage right here if any of you guys want to get involved in this project contact me in the link below Let's kick off with the first episode. We're gonna build Pugly some rock sliders. Right, so one of the big reasons why we're doing rock sliders is uh, besides the protection to the soles on the doors, um, Lazan usually struggles a bit to get into this car. It is quite a tall vehicle and it is locked at the moment. <laughs> um, usually the issue is the vehicle is quite high to get into and there's nothing to step on. And besides, it looks bloody awesome. Uh, we're going to do some tubular design round tube, 42 mil by three millimeters. So I think it's going to be the perfect size between too heavy and strong enough. Usually I don't get bottom and outs on the soles. The chassis is quite low, so that gets hit first. This is usually if there's a random rock in place. So if they do get bashed up, that's fine. I'll just cut that section and do it over. And then we know we need to reinforce them. But until then, I want to keep the vehicle and the whole project as light as possible. Was that sarcasm? So then some people were actually asked me why would you take such a big vehicle then if you want to keep the whole set of light. Ironically this was the cheapest bucky I could find with the proper engine and proper drivetrain with the suspension setup of a capable off-road vehicle. This uh, Defender is actually a coil sprung vehicle front and rear. You've got a three link suspension at the back with coil springs double on this one actually because it's heavy duty rated. Driving comfort this thing is actually quite amazing for a solid axle vehicle in front but it's just so much stronger off-road. It's got that you know, that awesome feel of an adventure vehicle going off-road. It's really not fast at all or fuel efficient, but it just, it's just got the character and hence the name of Mr. Pugly, the crossbreed pug. I did some templates with cardboard just to trace out where I'm gonna mount them. I'm actually gonna mount them on the chassis. There's some uh, support sticking out. That should be more than strong enough to actually carry the weight of a person and also some bashing from rocks when the vehicle's on it. Uh, I drew this open cat and I gave it to laser cutting place. And then now I've got all my pieces cut out. This is some eight mil steel brackets. Mild steel, these are going to weld onto the 40, 42 mil round tubing right here. I've already done this one. This is the passenger side one. I just wanted to see if everything lines up. So here I am. I'm going to do this video for you guys. Let's now do the driver's side, tack everything up on the vehicle itself, take it off, weld it up. All right, so first step is just basically um, putting all the brackets in place on the chassis. go along and then just finish the ones that I started with later. So after welding this rock slider, the main frame, um, I probably didn't wait long enough for the heating to cool down so it contracted and expanded in the wrong place and now the pipe looks slightly like a banana if you, if you look right through the middle. Uh, I'm just going to heat it up a bit um, and then just bend it a bit straight back again. It should only take about one or two millimeters or right at the end for the whole thing to look um, right straight again. So 
So that's basically the main hoop part done on Pugly. Um, the frames on our tuck welded, everything is welded together. Now we need to do the hoop sections, that is the bent tubing part. Now I actually uh, got myself one of these manual tube benders. Uh, it doesn't kink the tube at all, so it's, it's quite a neat fit. It was a bit expensive, but that's one of the tools that I just invested in that I'm, I'm gonna use in the future as well. And now I have to assemble the thing again, because it takes a lot of space. Um, I've actually drilled holes in the floor and mounted it there. This is probably the second time I've used it. Um, I'm still not sure with the calculations of the tube where it's bent, so I still need to practice that. Uh, so it's going to be a bit of a trial area, work out a lot of mass involved uh, geometry uh, just to get the lengths correct um, without wasting too much tubing. So now we have to build it. Can I get some attention? There is something I need to say To all those passing by outside this little room where I've been staying But the door is both the windows locked I'm waving to the glass Somebody's full attention, but they all just move too fast. Hey, I got a thing to say. Can you hear me through the glass? I got some useful information about your future in your past. Hey, I got something to tell you. Can you hear me through the door? I got some useful All else fails RTFM. Right, so that took me pretty much uh, 16 minutes to assemble the whole bender, and now I can actually start the tube bending part. I got it all figured out. It's all two and two is four, and four is eight. Everyone listen up now, because we are running late. Hey! I got a thing to say, can you hear me through the glass? I got some useful information about your future in your past. Hey, I got something to tell you, can you hear me through the door? I got some useful information. So here we have the final products of our manual tube bender. Now these angles are 50 degrees, both of them, and these tubes are Pretty much identical. Right, so tube bending done. This is probably my second set sliders I've done. I'm still practicing with it. Um, these are between 50 and 50.8 degrees, all of them. So I think that's pretty good. The tolerance is small there. Um, distance wise, the bends are nearly identical, so that's great. I downloaded a tube notch uh, calculator, printed those out. I'm gonna attach them to the tube mark them and then grind them according to the angle i'm going to mount them to the parallel pipe which is going to be a 50 degree for these bends and then 90 degree for the structures or the struts in between the tubes so these are the two templates that i've printed out this is the 50 degree one for the tube notching and then also the 90 degree this is by blocklayer.com the calculator and we'll see how well it works just now I got some useful information about your future So instead of swapping out the grinding disc with the cutting disc, it's just a lot easier to get another grinder and dedicate this one to the cutting grinder. These ones are cheap, so it's really worth it keeping a few of these spares. It's all two and two is four and four is eight. Everyone listen up now, cause we are running late. Got a thing to say, can you hear me through the glass? I got some useful information about your future in your past. Hey, I got something to tell you, can you hear me through the door? I got some useful information that will satisfy, satisfy your soul. I mean, look at this. This almost came out perfectly fits like a glove and that goes exactly to the end right there. 
a preview of the final product. It fits very snugly against that two piece right there. And you can see here, it's almost seamless. So I reckon that looks very good. And dimensions are spot on. Right, so all the smaller gusset, all the support tubes in between the main ones are all notched. They're all evenly spaced. It took me a while to get them perfect, but they fit very snug. And you can see this is all done by hand. Just a grinder, nothing fancy. And they fit perfectly on 90 degrees. Almost no gap there. Well, virtually no gap. So that's gonna make welding a lot easier. Now, next step is to symbol the whole setup. Right, so that brings us to the final step. The rock sliders are done. Ugh. Yeah, and these things are pretty beefy. So I don't think they're going anywhere. Um, now it's off to painting, and then they're gonna be installed on Pugly. So stay tuned for that one. That's gonna happen in the next episode. That is it for this episode. If you guys enjoyed it, please let me know in the comment section below. Or any suggestions, you're welcome. Let me know what you think of the series. And um, please subscribe. We'll be doing a few episodes before a big trip in April. We'll reveal what's happening later. And from here on, cheers. Check it, guys. Yeah.